Hello, welcome to another video of Code Snippet. So in this video, we are going to look into another important topic inside Spring Boot that is Spring Boot logging. So when it comes to building an application, logging is very very important aspect and enabling logging inside Spring Boot application is very very easy. So that is something which we are going to look into this video. So this is going to be a fun video. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. So without wasting any time, let's directly jump into the agenda of this particular video. So here is the agenda. So first we will see what exactly is logging, why that is needed. Then we will have a quick discussion on various frameworks that can be used in order to enable logging inside your Spring Boot application. After that, we will see something called as logging levels. So there are different logging levels that we have. So we will go through them. And after that, we will see how we can enable logging by using different ways. One of the ways is by using SLF4J annotation, right? Very, very easy, right? So logging is very, very easy. So this topic we will quickly try to cover, right? So let's first go through the logging, right? So let me just open this particular canvas over here. So, right. So let's say we have this particular application over here, which is a e-com application, right? So this is basically the e-com application that we have been using for a lot of our videos inside Spring Boot series. So same application, let's say we have built and let's say we want to deploy it now. So we have deployed it in dev QA and stage environments. We have done our testing and everything in these environments is working well and good, right? So everything is fine. You have tested everything, every feature, every functionality. Now let's say we are going to deploy this on production. So we have deployed on production, right? So once we deploy our application here in production, let's say there is certain functionality which starts failing. The functionality itself is not working, right? But that same functionality is working on dev QA stage, right? So basically it works on my machine or my environment, right? But what exactly is happening in production now, right? How you are going to find it out, right? So that is when logging comes into picture. And that is the reason we need logs. We need those logs in order to do investigation of things going wrong in your production environment once you deploy your application, right? So logging is something which will guide you to debug something in your production environment when something is going wrong, right? So now if you have appropriate logging mechanism in production for the functionality which is failing, you can go ahead and check what exactly is happening, right? Basically that is the purpose of your logging, right? So in order to have a better visibility of your issues and to be able to find out issues inside your production environment, you need logs, right? So that is basically logging. So let's come back over here. So logging we have seen. So next one is log back and log 4 g right? So what exactly is these two, right? Let me go over here. So this is basically the Spring Boot documentation again. So this is basically the source of the information that I am providing you. So I will add this particular link in bio. You can just go ahead and check. So do you see over here? So this Java util logging or log4j2 or logback are basically the frameworks that you can use in order to enable debugging inside your Spring Boot application, right? So these are nothing but the frameworks that you can use, right? Now it says by default, logback is used for your logging inside your Spring Boot application. I'm not sure if you can see that. Let me just zoom it a bit. Now you can see it perhaps. So it says by default, logback is used for logging, right? And there is a log format that they have mentioned as well. So this is basically the log format. So what we will do over here, let's go over here in the, our application and let's check what exactly is happening. So just to give you a quick glance of this application. So this is basically e-com project where we have these controllers in which we have product controller, order controller. We have this service in which we have product service, payment service and various other services. Right. We have this repository layer, which is product repository, which is kind of using a JPA repository, right? So if you have been following Spring Boot series that we are going through, then we have used this application ample amount of time, right? And in case if you need the source code of this particular project, then I have added the link in description. You can go ahead and check. So what I will do, let me just deploy this application real quick. So it is starting. So there we go. It started, right? So do you see this? What are these? In this particular console output, you have these lines, right? What are these? These are basically logs, right? Nothing but logs. So now what is the format of this log, right? First you are getting date along with timestamp. Then you have info. What is info? Info is basically severity of this log, right? So here we are going to look into severity, right? So if I go back over here, there is logging levels, which are nothing but the severity of your log. So there are various logging levels and each one have different severity, right? So info is basically nice log, right? It is just providing us information of what is happening inside your application. And 
nice and friendly lock right so after that we have process id so this is basically the process id on which your application is running on and from this process id you are getting this particular log after that you have information about your application after that you have this particular package from which it is coming and after that you have this particular message so it is, this is basically the body of your log right so that's how your log format will look and same kind of examples they are also giving over here now from where these logs are coming did we enable any logging we did not right so whenever you create a spring boot project and you deploy it you will see these logs right so these are coming from somewhere right these are configured somewhere so basically these are coming from log back usually we use starter dependency inside our spring boot application so that guy will bring up log back for us in order to do logging so these logs are basically coming from there right and log 4j2 is again another framework which you can use so it's coming from apache it's basically apache framework which you can integrate inside your spring boot application and directly use it right so you can do that as well so it's your choice to pick up whatever you want so java util logging is something which is very old right so it's basically provided by java but there are new frameworks available and logback and log4j are new frameworks so so you can feel free to go with any one of them right so log4j is something which is enabled by default inside your spring boot application right let's go back over here and let's discuss logging levels now so here are different logging levels we have so we have fatal we have error we have warning we have info debug and trace right so whenever we get some kind of exceptions or your application breaks unexpectedly then we get error message right after that we have warnings that so warning severity is medium right so it's medium basically that means you don't have any issue now but you may have issue in future right so you need to take care of it right so that is something which is warning log is displaying us after that we have info which is like major tasks which are running inside your application happy happy things right so we want to log them to check if the flow is going right and everything so you can log that by using normal log info log right after that we have debug right so this is basically the more detailed log that you have right in order to debug your application right so debug and trace logs are not enabled by default right you need to have some configuration to enable them right if you enable that configuration then only these two logs will be visible right and their severity is basically normal they are more detailed and will provide more information about your log right now logging levels what do they define they are just different tags so that we as a engineer can identify the severity of this particular log right so they are just a identifiers or tags right now here in this example as we can see over here we have all the info logs over here right so many info logs over here and one of them is warning as well so if you have warning then it will be visible like this right now what we are going to do over here is let me go into one of the service let me open this service and let me go to this particular add product and what we can do over here is now let's say i want to log something on the console right so what is the standard way of doing it we can do it by using print statement i'll just say hello in add product and if i start our application stop and rerun and hit this particular api so let me just bring up my postman over here there we go let me just hit this api and the product is added Right. and now you can see that there are many print statements that we have inside our application and this is basically the log that we have added now but do you see the difference between this log and this log there are more things and more details in this particular log but that is something which is lagging over here right so if you just go ahead and use print statement inside your application in production environment you will not get much details right so that is basically the lack of it so using loggers like these will give you more details about your logs right more details about your functionality over here so what we can do over here let me just remove this we don't want this now let's add a logger over here so i'll go over here and i will say logger right logger let's take it from slf4j right logger equal to logger factory dot get logger and we will give the name of this particular class over here just copy this from here and let's paste it over here dot class that is basically the logger so this logger is now coming from slf4j logger now what is slf4j slf4j is basically the implementation of your logback right 
So logback is kind of an abstraction, right? And SLF 4G is basically the implementation of that. So the full form of this thing goes like simple logging facade for Java, right? So this is basically the implementation of your logback and it will give you logger factory and you can use get logger method and register your class over there and you will get the logger instance, right? Now I don't want to modify this. So let's make it final, right? So accidentally modification will be prevented by using final, right? Then every class will have a different logger. So I'll make it private as well. Right. So this logger is basically for only this particular service. And this logger is bound to this particular class only, right? So we don't want to create an object. So I will make it static as well. Static, right? So private final static logger logger right so what i will do now i will go over here where is our add product there we go so what i will do i'll do logger dot info so i want the info log now right so logger dot info so adding product in db let's see right now let's restart our application and let's see what exactly is happening right so I will again go back over here in our postman and send it and let's come back. Now do you see this? Now what are we getting? We are getting complete log. We are getting date, info log, process ID, application, product service from where the application is coming. As we have given product service over here, we are getting that product service and our body is over here basically. So this is basically the message, right? And you can have a different kind of logger now. So let me just add a few more logger. So here I will say error now. Right after that, let's say we have warning. After that, we have debug. After that, we have error. Error. After that, we have trace. All those logs we have added. Now let's start our application. Let's see what happens. Right now, let me just call this particular API again. And do you see this? Now, do you see? We have info error and warning printed over here so three logs we got now do you remember what i said debug and trace are not enabled by default we need to explicitly enable them so that we will see that we will see when we come to configuration basically so this is how you can add different loggers that is one way of doing that right that is one way of doing that so here if i go back to our agenda logging levels we have seen and enabling logging by using slf 4g annotation right so now we are not using annotations, right? We are using SLF 4J, but we are using it in this way, right? So the other way is by using SLF 4J annotation. So what I will do, so SLF 4J annotation you can use. And this particular annotation is coming from Lombok basically, right? So Lombok is kind of a dependency that needs to be added if you want to use SLF 4J, right? So as you can see, Lombok external SLF 4J, SLF 4J, right? So if you add that, you don't need this. Let me just comment this out. And what I will do over here, so logger won't work. You need to use log now. So log is something which is provided by SLF4J now. So what I will do, I'll replace that by log. Let's restart and let's see what happens. And I will just hit it again and let's see what is happening. So our logs are back, right? So that is how you can use at the rate SLF4J annotation from Lombok and add your respective logs. How easy it is to enable logging inside your Spring Boot application very easy right so you can just go ahead and do that now let's see how you can enable debug and trace logging levels over here right so in order to do that you need to add few properties inside your application dot properties so let's say logging level root I have added to warning right so the root is now warning so if i add warning over here then only warning and error will be printed right everything below will not be printed right so that is basically the log level that we add over here if you are adding warning then only warning and error will be printed if you are adding error then only error will be printed if you are adding info then info warning and error these three will be printed and if you are adding debug then debug info warning error battle will be printed right and if you are adding trace then all of them will be printed so that will be the flow right so now i am adding only warning over here now if i stop and rerun then as you can see Nothing is printed. There is only warning log that is printed. And there will be an error log which will be printed when we hit our this particular API. Right. So now you can expect a error logs and warning logs only. Right. So that's how you can enable. Now we wanted debug, right? So I can just go ahead over here and add debug. Right. So now I have added debug. Before that, let's go over here and add a debug log. 
so i will just add a debug one and i will also add a trace one here right and let's just restart our application now here i have added debug right so do you see how many logs are coming over here as i have added debug over here all the logs from debug will be coming over here so there are basically ample amount of logs are being printed now let me just go to the bottom of it and let me just hit this particular endpoint again there are lots and lots of debug logs are coming and one of them is from our application as well so, and as you can see over here so this is basically the debug log right and let's do one thing let's enable trace as well so i will just go over here and let's say trace and let's just start our application let's see what happens so now it will die i believe right because there are trace as well so a lot of logs are coming basically so if i send it then uh, let's see what is happening there are trace logs as well now so it will be difficult to find our log let me just search our string over here so as you can see now trace is also enabled right so all the logs basically over here are enabled now so that's how you can enable different log levels so this configuration you are changing for root now right that's why all the logs which are coming from spring framework those debug and trace logs are also coming into picture over here but what you can do over here is instead of root you can just give this particular directory of our service so i will just copy this over here and let's go over here instead of root i will just add it so now what will happen only logs for this particular directory will be enabled having severity from trace to everything right now you can see that only info logs are there for your entire application but now if i hit this particular request you will see that you will have trace debug warning error info everything enabled over here so that is how you can enable these particular logs over here so that's how you can define inside application properties that what level of logs you want and the default configuration of your spring boot you can modify like that so that is basically the end of it so we have seen what is logging we have had an introduction of logback and log4j then we have seen different logging levels and how we can enable that by using slf4j and slf4j annotation right so that is how you can enable logging inside your spring boot application and which will be helpful for you when you deploy your application inside your production environment so i hope that you have understanding of how to enable logging inside your spring boot application if you like this video hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to code snippet share this video with your friends so that they can also learn about spring boot logging that's it for this video see you in the next video